Hello, podcast listeners. This episode contains graphic descriptions of real-life tortures inflicted on real-life people. I may be a total monster myself, but I at least let my victims know what they're in for first. Enjoy. What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. Go ahead and laugh, you guys. Find the final little passes of business. A dead meat. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James A. Janice. I'm Chelsea Rebecca, and we're boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah. Today, we're gonna do an episode about torture. Oh, oh torture! Torture and saw. We're combining the two. And we're going to talk about how Jigsaw and his methods have actually very closely, in some cases, mirrored real-life tortures that we've inflicted upon each other. As our friend of the show, Jigsaw, warned you, this episode's going to be really graphic. I know some people are into horror movies, and that's all good, but real-life horrors are a little different, I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to be pretty squeamish this episode because I love seeing fictional horror and I love all that crazy gore and fake stuff, but as soon as I start really imagining that this stuff was done to actual human beings, that just makes me real sad, man, because those were not good people. Yeah, so, you know, I totally get if you're more sensitive to things that have actually happened. When you're imagining the things I'm going to talk about are things that were done to real people, that's a bit more upsetting than fictional violence yes so don't expect us uh to spend this episode talking about how cool this stuff is or talking about it in like a way where it's like oh that was so badass that they did this no this is awful terrible things we're just uh looking at it and relating it to the saw series which is the uh new kill count franchise you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) jigsaw got his request it wasn't even going to be the Saw franchise. That's why I had to move the Leprechaun kill counts to those Mondays. It was originally going to be, I don't even want to say, because these people will be sad, Final Destination. So if you wanted Final Destination, you can thank all the damn Saw people for getting preempted <laughs> by fucking Tobin Bell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you ready to get I'm ready. started? I'm ready. Okay. So um, I, I'm going to be reading. Now that we're doing video, you're going to see me reading from this paper, so... I don't want to hear about how I'm reading a script. It's a lot of information. It is. This, yeah. I actually was worried this episode would be short, but when I printed it out, I realized it's kind of long. <laughs> Chelsea so. really does her research. Yeah, I actually started a WordPress site for the podcast. So typically, you know, if it's a movie review, it'll just be a link to the episode. But if it's an episode like this where I'm doing a lot of research... I'm going to have links to either websites I used or books. This case, it was mostly books that I read. Um, Off the top of my head, there's The History of Torture, which is just, I think that was written in like the 60s. It's a little older. Um, The Big Book of Pain, Mm. which I think is the one I used the most. But yeah, I'll I'll link all of those in the, the WordPress, so... So I wanted to give this episode some backbone instead of just going back and forth between this is a saw trap, this is a real life thing. You know, I wanted it to have more of a point than just kind of bouncing back and forth between those two things. So I started doing research and I realized how similar Jigsaw is and his philosophy is to real life torturers, inquisitors. And I found that throughout history, the justifications for using torture as a method to either extract information or to prevent crime, it's so similar to the reasons Jigsaw gives throughout the series for, you know, why he does what he does. Because people are constantly asking him. And he's super insufferable about it. Oh, my God. I love Jigsaw. Jigsaw is the most (laughs) smug asshole ever. (laughs) Just so you know, we've watched all these movies by now. Because I always watch all the movies before a kill count. We have sat through all eight of those films. We had a great time. We had so much fun. It's a lot of fun. I was really sad when they were done. But Jigsaw is such a prick. He is, yes. And and not to confuse that with (laughs) Tobin Bell, because wow, Tobin Bell is incredible. Tobin Bell is so he holds awesome. those movies together, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Jigsaw's head is so far up his own ass that I, I don't even know. That's actually a torture. 
<laughs> oh, great. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. So talking about torture in general, I think, is important for the topic because defining what counts as torture and what motivates torture is what makes the comparison between Jigsaw and real life inquisitors and torturers really interesting and really resonate, I think. So oh, so we're going to define our terms? Up yes, top? I yeah. think so, because torture... Torture can be used very broadly, right? So torture can be used as something that hurts really bad. Yeah. But it does have to have a legal definition because yes. it's it's barred in the United States mm-hmm. uh, via the Bill of Rights. No no torture. Mm-hmm. Geneva there. Convention. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it, it does have like very specific legal definitions. And those definitions have changed over the years. So, for example, um, the Magna Carta signed in 1215, that outlawed torture. And that's in 1215. So I, you might be thinking, well, we know for a fact that torture happened after that. Like, yeah. of course it did. Torture was okay in cases of treason against the crown. So that can mean anything, really. There's ways to work around that. But, you know, th- th- we've always kind of tried to define. And Yeah, and we've always found ways around it because, I mean, the Bush administration enhanced interrogation was yes. just what they said instead of torture, and that was in the name of national security. So yes. there's always ways around. It, it's like everyone agrees torture's bad, mm-hmm. except but, for in this case. And that's what Jigsaw does, right? Yeah. Jigsaw even says a few times that he, he doesn't love violence. He doesn't approve of murder. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> You know, he he doesn't like murderers. Yeah. But he has this mentality of this is for a greater societal good. And we see this throughout history. That's what torture is, you know, in so many people's eyes. It's for a societal good. Yeah. Which is total bullshit. It is. Yeah. (laughs) But if you I think we've talked about this book before. It's a it's a book about post 9-11 horror that I I read uh, bits of where he talks about Saw and he talks about, yeah, Jigsaw's attitude that he's doing this for the good of whatever he thinks society is. And, you know, we've done the same thing in the name of societal good. So I honestly doing this research has made me appreciate that character so much more it's yeah i mean it's definitely it's probably the horror villain with the most uh uh, most clear-cut ideology or at least the one that they're most passionate about so many other killers are just random killing machines or they have like a very personal motivation whereas jigsaw has this like uh overarching ideology about society and human nature and Mm -hmm. Uh, the will to survive and, and and the worthiness to live. And so that makes him a very interesting character, yeah. even though he is an insufferable smug prick. I have a really well-written um, concluding paragraph to this episode that's like basically that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. You, you didn't like, you know, I have other things I want to touch on, but I'm just like, so. that's, no, <laughs> that's my closing. All right. So. Torture throughout history has been used as a means to control social order. It's why the Inquisitions happened, right? Oh, my God. There's a kitty cat. (laughs) Oh, man. If you're just listening to this, you can't see Lucy. But she's here. Don't Please don't turn off the computer. She is on top of the computer tower. It's because it gets all warm and she wants to sit up there. Yeah, she's a perv. And so this spans... All cultures, all times, all cultures. No one's more uniquely violent than anyone else. It's just a human thing, which it's both kind of encouraging and and I'm fucked up also. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because you'd like it if there were just one society where you can be like, those people were fucked up, but yeah, good thing we're but not we, all like that. We've moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I found the history of Chinese torture really interesting, specifically because old China, like we're talking Tang Dynasty, this is like 600 to 900 something. So so old China was this very, you know, think medieval Europe, like it's it's all about social order, hierarchy, class. It's like a very, hi kitty. It's like a very um, delineated system, right? And so when this, social order gets disrupted they have something called the tang code like after the tang dynasty (laughs) where it's this super complex series of laws which took into consideration social class the degree of the crime and even the philosophical reasoning for why certain punishments fit certain crimes did the tang code explain how you can make 
a drink that kind of tastes like orange juice, but, but not really. And you can have it in space. That's right. And orangutans love drink. it. They still make tang. I think they do. Probably. It's do. just like a powder, right? That you mm-hmm. add water to. Mm-hmm. I that's, drank it. Yeah, I drank I it. I don't know if I ever want to drink it again. I don't know if it's good for you. It's probably not. It's powder. <laughs> It's a powder. <laughs> but so so this this legal code they have was really complex because it that really strictly delineated society calls for a really complex answer to any possible outcome that can happen, any possible crime that can happen. Like if someone from a lower class attacks someone's servant from a higher class, you know, like very specific, any iteration of any crime is in this code, basically. Okay. So the most brutal torture I could find that was used oh, in China. We're starting with the most brutal you could Not find? Not in China. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, was Ling Chi, where the victim was sliced to pieces by an executioner using a series of knives. This was obviously extremely slow and agonizing and was reserved for the most serious of crimes, such as treason or patricide. So they're awake as they're yes. getting sliced into pieces? Yes. Correct. How big of pieces are we talking? Depends. Because like when I'm it's cooking... It's to the whim of the executioner. Because like when I'm cooking, there's, you know, you can chop something, you can mince something, you can make something into matchstick cuts. It's at the whim of the, the cook, is. the chef. So the thing, with, the thing with this, and for a lot of the forms of torture I'm going to talk about, is some of these are so old. So this is from like 600 something. It's very ancient. The thing with those methods of torture is it's easy to have those be exaggerated as years go on, especially by Western accounts of this, because this is like the mysterious East, you mm-hmm. know, for all we know, this could be completely exaggerated. Um, I think some people believe that this was only done after the prisoner or victim was dead. Like they they would slice their body up after they were dead because they believe that that would make them not be able to be whole in the afterlife like on that note it's so interesting to learn the reasoning behind all these whether they were done while living or dead because in every single case i'm sure you're thinking why not just kill them it's so much easier to just you know cut off their head and be done with it but obviously if they're going to take the time to to cut people into pieces uh before or after they're dead either way it's like you got you got to have a reason for it and right. it, and it can't just be like well they were sick fucks because yeah some people are sick fucks but like we're talking about societal wide things so and like state ordained things mm-hmm. so there's probably always a further reason than just like sociopathy to to be doing these and like you said earlier it's to it's in this case especially to reinforce a, a social code especially since this was punishment for patricide allegedly which is murder of your father okay and i think respect for the father especially in a society like this where it's like all, you know respect for the family the elders of your family which probably extends to the state too which yes. was probably like a, an emperor at this point tang right yes so that yes, he's yes. probably considered like the father of the country yeah so that, that also included treason mm-hmm. so so this would serve as uh, a deterrent as well as exactly well. okay yes so it's deterrent and punishment yeah because maybe just getting your head cut off doesn't sound so bad so you know mm-hmm. dabble in a little patricide but as soon as you start getting threatened with getting chopped apart in what's it called ling chi ling chi mm-hmm. yeah you don't want that ling chi so you're like well oh, second thought maybe i won't kill my pops um, I, I mentioned that one because it reminded me a ton of the trap in part six with Simone and Eddie, the uh, predatory lenders. Oh, the one that opens the movie? Yes. Okay. Do you want to describe it? So they both wake up. This is at the very top of the movie. And uh, they're they're on opposite sides of a room with a barrier in front. They can see each other. And uh, their instructions are whoever can uh, contribute more flesh to this scale that they have to put down like a little slide thing gets to live. The other person dies. And so uh, the one guy is a lot bigger. And so he starts cutting off his like stomach fat or his skin even and starts throwing it in there. And then Simone, the woman who is a a very much more lithe person, uh, just ends up cutting off her arm entirely like at the elbow yeah. drops it in there and that's enough weight to counteract and she survives yeah and she is uh we'll probably talk about her a little later when we talk about the effectiveness of torture because she is someone who in this movie and in the next one is like this was bullshit i didn't yeah. learn anything and so i'm always like yeah simone fuck this guy yeah yeah, yeah. 
So and I wrote down his uh, his little intro to that part to where he basically just says you recklessly loan people money knowing their financial limitations counting on repossessing more than they could ever pay back your predators. But today you become the prey and it is your own pound of flesh that I demand. So there's reasoning behind him making that trap what it is. There's always some kind of like poetic reasoning and he in his own twisted way makes the punishment fit the crime this instance too especially that whole movie you know movie for the people in this trap you know predatory lenders they caused the market to crash essentially so i think that one specifically stood out to me as a really good example of punishment and torture used to reinforce social order yeah yeah jigsaw did more uh to punish them than the government did yeah (laughs) Torture's also been used historically for entertainment. Mm. Ancient Rome is maybe the best example of this. So there's shows at the Colosseum where people are eaten alive by animals or tortured. So many different kinds of tortures. Jigsaw also likes to watch his games play out. I don't think he'd ever admit outright that he's doing it for entertainment, but some part of him is entertained. Yeah, at several points in that first movie, you can see uh, the corpse just raise up by like a couple of inches off the ground. Can as, you really? Uh, yeah, it's as he uh, gets such an erection at the thought <laughs> of the <laughs> Adam and Dr. Gordon. I thought it was like, oh, to... wow, if you're paying enough attention, you can kind of see it move a little bit. No, he just has oh, a hard on He for just torture. has a big old boner. <laughs> big old torture boner. Oh, man. <laughs> but also these spectacles were again used to maintain social order because this is Rome often executing Christians. They would take Christian prisoners, especially after Rome burned and Nero was like, shit, I need a scapegoat. I'm going to arrest a whole bunch of Christians and say they did it. And they tortured them in all kinds of fun ways. This is an account. This was written in the 1500s. So grain of salt, although I think historians agree that like this happened. I think we all are just in agreement that any kind of torture you can think of that happened in the Colosseum probably happened. Okay. <laughs> the frying pan was filled with oil, pitch, oh, no. or resin, and then set over a fire. And when it began to boil and bubble, then were the Christians of either sex thrown into it, such as had persisted steadfastly and boldly in the profession of Christ's faith, to the end that they might be roasted and fried like fishes. I'm sorry, how big is this frying pan? A giant frying pan. There's pictures of it. That's kind of, of funny, though. I know. Like, the, I, you know, big stuff's funny. I know. I was big objects. That too. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Until they start. But it's like fr- the worst way to die, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to say that a bunch of times during this, I think. There's many (laughs) worst ways to die. Then we have the Middle Ages in Europe. The most funnest time in (laughs) Europe. (laughs) The one place where if you ever get to time travel, you just blacklist that time from the machine. You don't go there. No. This is when we start to find maybe the most infamous examples of trial by ordeal. The idea behind trial by ordeal is that God would protect the innocent and would proclaim them the winner. Yeah. Quote unquote. But they, but they die still. Depending on what the trial by ordeal I'm, is. I'm thinking Salem. Where You're it's thinking like... Salem. So that I think that might be very specific to Salem because I kept seeing that in reference to the witch trial. So what James is talking about is there was a trial by ordeal where they would throw accused witches into a body of water. And theoretically, the water... Water is holy. I don't know. Water, Water's holiness would not accept a witch into its depths. So if the person drowned, that meant that they, they were innocent because they had been accepted into the depths of the... <laughs> Great. Yes. Good job. You proved uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that they weren't a witch by killing them. But that's okay. Since they were innocent, they went to heaven. It's exactly. All it's out. all good. So what, what this did was it kept the crown or the church's hands clean from murder because technically... They were leaving it up to God. Ooh, that sounds Who familiar. Who does that sound like? That sounds like Jigsaw. Exactly. Fucking smug asshole. So what Jigsaw does. Technically, I didn't technically kill anyone. Technically, I'm not a murderer. Technically, I'm not touching you. Technically, technically. technically. No. technically. <laughs> so yeah, Jigsaw basically uses forces of nature 
to kill his victims. Because think about it. He kills them with gravity. He kills them with energy. He kills them, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. He kills them with elaborately constructed engineering traps that he right. built and set them up. But in. so did these people. They make people do these trials by ordeal. But still, the, the final factor of it is God. Yeah. And for Jigsaw, he thinks the final factor of this is the victim's will to live. Yeah. It's all. It's not up to him. Right? It's up to them or up to fate or something. So, and th- this is from the, I believe, the Big Book of Pain. That's the Big Book of T-Pain? The Big Book of T-Pain. <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you read an auto-tune? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's just different sized fonts. <laughs> there was trial by water in which the suspect was thrown into a pool and if they sunk were deemed innocent. So, okay. Trial by fire in which the suspect had to grab a hot iron bar while he walked nine paces and prayed that no blisters appeared after three days. And trial... What? I'm sorry, you have a question? Of course the blisters are going to appear. Yeah. What the fuck? But if you're innocent, God will make sure they don't. That's bullshit. I know. I get so mad. I know. You're going to be very mad. I get so mad when people just like murder other people Uh and are like... It's okay, God will. It's like the whole like thing with like in wars and stuff. Just kill them all. God will sort out who's innocent. That that was a quote I find. I that was a quote I found. Um, there was a not an Inquisitioner. I think it was during the Crusades. Um, I forget what his name was, but the, yeah, some some man is famously quoted as saying like, "Just slaughter them all. God will sort out his own. Like God knows his own." <laughs> that is some such arrogant belief. In like, mm-hmm. for sure, my belief system's right, right, and it'll get resolved. It's like, hey, what if you're wrong though? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Oh no, yeah. I don't want to get tortured. Yeah, well, I'm, you. I'm will. sorry. You're right. You got it. God will sort it. Then there's trial by fire and water, in which the suspect <laughs> plunged their hands into a cauldron of boiling water, picked up a stone, and again prayed that no blisters develop. So what it was, I was confused by this at first. Imagine like a, a boiling pot of water. There's a stone at the bottom. They oh, have to okay. reach in and grab it, pull it out. That's what it was. I thought it was put your hand in, take it out, and then lift up a rock for yeah. some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I had to consult another book because I was confused. This is my favorite one. I'd never heard of this before. For priests accused of civil crimes, these particular atrocities were replaced with the ordeal of coarsened bread in which the accused was made to eat bread containing feathers. If they choked, they were presumed guilty. What? Feathers? Yeah. I bet I could eat a feather and be fine. I don't... It's No, that, I feel like it's sharp. The, the feather is? Yeah, what like the bottoms and stuff. Oh. I don't... I don't know. Give me a feather. I think I could do this. I don't have any... So, again, yeah, all injury is done technically by naturally occurring things. Physics, gravity, energy, time, mm-hmm. right? Technically. I'm not saying they are. I know. Jigsaw's still going to jail e- for murder. Every eye roll I do is at Jigsaw and the Inquisitors, right. not at you. Exactly. <laughs> so one that I thought was a, a good example of this uh, in terms of Jigsaw's traps is the shotgun collar in Saw Three. So Saw Three is the medical drama Saw because <laughs> as we saw learned, ER. each Saw movie <laughs> is just a CBS show with some torture interjected in it. And Saw Three is the medical d- procedural. And uh, that's when Dr. Lynn has a, a collar around her neck with shotgun shells. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to use the wrong term here. Oh my here. God, guys. Shotgun shotgun explosive thingies aimed at her neck yeah, and very good. it's uh, attached to a system where uh, if jigsaw's pulse stops- yeah so she's she has to operate she has to do brain surgery on jigsaw essentially oh that's when she like cuts a piece of his skull it's out pretty to release gnarly some pressure. yeah yeah it's such and a so if procedure. his heart rate gets too high or too low like if he goes into cardiac arrest or if he dies during surgery the shotgun things around her neck go off and blow her head off. Yeah. So basically, he's not killing. No one's killing anyone. It's his heart rate. It's a force of nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was one. I, I was trying to think of a good example because all of them technically are examples of that. But I think that one, just the use of someone's heartbeat, was a good example of like something that is naturally occurring that is determining if someone lives or dies. Yeah. 
the Middle Ages move into the Crusades, which then develop into the Inquisition. Great. Uh, also, the funnest time in Europe. Nobody expects Specifically, it. Spain yeah. and Portugal. This was the church's attempt to root out heretics, a.k.a. not being the right kind of Christian or some other religion, such as Jewish or Muslim. Torture became art and performance. Inquisitors emphasized the psychological aspect of torture. Victims were captured very informally, often being pulled from bed in the middle of the night and taken to a dungeon. They'd wait there a few days in solitary confinement, and then they'd be taken to the torture chamber. <laughs> <laughs> you made it sound like the Superdome or something. The torture chamber. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Get your eyelids ripped off. That is a, that is something that happened. Fucking course. Everything you can think of. Uh, uh, fingernails removed and stuck up your pee hole. That the fingernails, sure. I don't yeah. know about up the pee hole. Oh. So after the victims taken to the torture chamber, uh they would be presented a record of their misdeeds by masked men at a long table. Torture instruments lined the walls, and they were often painted red and black. Hello, Fernando. You chose to worship the wrong god. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's basically what this is. I couldn't believe it. Red and black, too. Like his robes? Yes. Yeah. Jigsaw, I, I, I'll get into this. This I, I got very excited during she this part of She loves color coding research. stuff. The walls would have mottos written on them, such as say nothing but good of the dead or dark theaters are suitable for dark deeds. The threat of torture or eventually torture itself would be used to elicit confession. So yeah, this this all reminded me so much of Jigsaw. He's always wearing red and black, except when he's just John Kramer, he tends to be in neutral colors. When he, I think when he's getting brain surgery, he's really, he's in a really vulnerable position. I think he's got like a kind of pale yellow shirt on. I think in all the flashbacks where it's with him and his wife, he's got like a tan or yellow color on. But when he's Jigsaw, he has straight up Inquisitor robes on and they're, they're red and black or even um, a red and black hoodie. So it's always those specific colors, which I find fascinating that those were colors that were used back then yeah. to kind of elicit fear. Any use of a, uh, of a big old pig head by the Inquisitors? Any Inquisitors run around wearing a big I mean, pig they head? would all be masked. Okay. You know, so y you wouldn't know who was kidnapping you. Any use of a puppet on a tricycle by the Spanish Inquisition? Not that I know of, no. No one would expect it. No one would expect it. <laughs> There was, I, I tried to find a way to work this in, but it didn't quite fit. Um, so in, I, I think like Renaissance era England, if a woman was a gossip, like a town gossip, or she spoke out of turn, they would put this thing on her head. And I think it was called a brank. I forget if that's what it's called. If I'm wrong, I'll edit it out. But they, they would put this basically cage on her head. That would have like a thing that goes in, in her mouth so she can't talk. And it's shaped sometimes like often like a pig or a Why? sow. So Why? they it's it's just to humiliate a woman into not speaking out of turn. So she'd be paraded around town like, look at this loud mouth. This, this loud mouth pig? Yeah. Hmm. So they're often shaped, I think donkeys, like different animals, but pigs are the ones that I saw the most often, which I thought was an interesting coincidence, but I couldn't quite find a way to work it in. Well, you just did. I just did. <laughs> Jigsaw kidnaps his victims with no warning, often at night and from places of comfort to them, so their own homes, just like the Inquisition would do. He takes them to their torture chamber while they're unconscious, so they have no idea where they are. He presents them with a record of their misdeeds, a.k.a. his videotapes recapping why they're there, which are also for the audience's benefit. <laughs> he writes mottos on the wall. The one I thought of was Cherish Your Life. I don't know if you can think of any other ones, but I think Cherish Your Life is the big one that they really... Is that the one in Amanda's? Or... It's, it's in a bunch of them, but I think specifically Amanda's might be... It's in, I think, a bunch of them because it's the it's the motto of his wife's drug clinic. That's right. Oh, so that comes in later. It comes in a yeah. few times. Yeah, so it shows up. And he uses the threat of inevitable torture to force his victims into being rehabilitated. It does work sometimes. The survivors meeting in Saw 3D, I have that on here. I yeah. I thought it was interesting you brought that up earlier. Yeah. I forget which survivors were like, it worked. It worked. Um, okay, so the woman who had to chop off her own hand, no, not she says, so hot yeah. on that idea. Simone said that's bullshit. There's another um, 
Boy, I can't remember. Well, it's mostly the the fraudster speaking. Who and, oh, who is saying, you know, this my will to live and blah blah blah. But yeah, yeah the guy who just made it was up. Was it Eric? I, think, I know Eric was one of these movies protagonists. I forget because every movie is a different yeah, asshole that we're following. All those movies around. are kind of a blur. There's yeah. another woman in in the rehabilitation meeting who talks about how she has some renewed sense to live, I think. Okay. So, you Most know, Most of them are just like nodding along. Yeah. Until we get. Oh my god! Probably the best moment of all film <laughs> is when Carrie Ellis is just chilling in the back. How the fuck did they make him come back? All right. <laughs> Spoilers for all of the Saw movies. Oh the yeah. <laughs> Inquisitors during the Spanish Inquisition sometimes would, if they had the time or money come up with extremely elaborate ways to torture their prisoners. This is likely the extreme minority, but it's worth mentioning. Jigsaw obviously does exactly this. He has tons of time and tons of money. And, you know, when you think about it, why wouldn't he just use the same traps over and over again? But, you know, he's got the time. He's got the money. He's going to make a point. Does he have the time? Dude's dying. That is true. (laughs) That guy's on borrowed time, (laughs) and he sees fit to make, like, a dozen different kind of elaborate fucking torture traps good point you got the fucking the the reverse bear trap dude that's the one everyone loves that's stick, true stick that's that everyone's on everyone's favorite. Head. yeah well or you know outsource that shit like in the in jigsaw we saw that he had blueprints of stuff he never made that yeah. ended up getting used i mean he outsources it with amanda yeah and hoffman hoffman and Apparently, Gordon. Gordon. Oh, yeah, Gordon. And I don't know. Maybe the next movie will zoom out a little bit more. And we Some can other, see Some other, like it's Rig or something. <laughs> yeah. Rig has been alive this whole time. Rig, I still feel you could do that with. Because we don't really, we don't technically see him die. I guess in the beginning of five, they do say everyone else died except for Hoffman. And what's the guy? Sh- not Schmidt. I always want to call him Schmidt. Oh. Um, it starts with an S. Sh- Shram. Sh- Shram. I don't think that's it. No, the badass who gave himself a trip yeah, yeah, the FBI guy. Yeah. Examples of elaborate torture devices, inquisitors allegedly made giant roasting pans. What? Like w- yes. the thing we already talked about? Dude, humans are fucking obsessed with giant roasting pans. I feel like <laughs> I when I was doing research, every culture has made some variation of a giant roasting pan to roast people in. it's so old like we don't even know when we first started doing that to people i want to see some airbnbs with a giant roasting pan hot tub Ooh, that'd be that would be fun. dope it'd be like a big old friggin frying pan but like it wouldn't boil you it would just be nice and cozy yeah another one is drums in which people were shoved and the insides were covered with razors so that when you rotated the drum the victim's skin would be flayed Mm -hmm. yeah i thought i thought it'd be a much uh less painful but annoying thing of like stick them in like a like a big congo drum and yeah. you stick them in there and then you just bang oh, on you it just and they're like, like make Dung. their ears bleed yeah i'm sure that happened i'm sure that happened too and the most famous torture device i think of all time what do you think it is uh iron maiden Mm-mm. that has a band named after it <laughs> How can that not be the most famous? Revise this. This is the <laughs> second most famous, whatever it is. Uh, drawn and quartered? No. Well, I guess that's not a device. That's more of a procedure. Uh, hold on. Uh, Think like picture. Okay, if I say the word torture. Uh, d- d- Iron Maiden. <laughs> Baby, it's the rack. The oh, rack the is rack. like the granddaddy of torture. Div- like everyone knows the rack. I don't you even need to describe it. But rack. if you don't know the rack, it's a table the victim would lay down on and you'd have your hands restrained at the top and your feet are restrained at the bottom. And the torturer would, would spin a crank and would just like slowly stretch you no. in either direction. So what it would do is it would pull limbs out of sockets. It would dislocate joints. And sometimes uh, some racks, which were fancy, had a spiked roller that the victim would be laying on top of. So when you turn the crank, the spiked roller would roll and basically shred your victim apart. 
Oh. So that's what that basically... Was, that, those were the like the premium racks? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Those were the add-ons that they tr- they always try to upsell you on. For sure. They're like, listen, I know that you can get the point across just by tearing them limb from limb, but also if you really want to like just drive it home, get this spiky wheel. Yeah. And I think the grossest thing about the rack is that when you're stretched like that, your body makes really loud popping sounds. So what they would do sometimes is they would bring in another prisoner and make them watch because it's psychological (sighs) torture too. It's like, this is what's going to happen to you. God. Jigsaw had a rack. I was about to say Jigsaw also had a trap that he called the rack. He says it's his favorite, I think. (laughs) I'm a fan of the classic. He is, yeah. <laughs> so I so, think sometimes I get a little fancy, but you yeah. just can't beat the classics. His is different though. It's it's um the person I mean, do you want to describe it? I can't remember which one it is. Because so, I feel like it's in a later movie. It's in three. What? Because Jeff fucks it up. Fucking Jeff. So basically oh, what just is... wait till I cover oh my God. fucking we Jeff. We have so many thoughts about Slow Jeff. Slow ass Jeff. Just move your ass, Jeff. Yeah. He's so slow. He's and responsible for more murders than Jigsaw. He honestly is because he really starts a domino effect of bullshit, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Gets his wife killed. He does. Fucking Anyway, Jeff. so Jigsaw's rack is, it's a guy standing kind of spread eagle. Like his arms are up, his legs are up. And his arms, legs, and head have these like clamps around them that twist. Instead of pull. Oh, and this is the guy who hit his kid with the car yes, and killed his kid? Yes, this guy hit Jeff's kid in a hit and run. And so Jeff has the opportunity to save this dude and just fucks it up. Yeah, he does. Because at first he's like, no, I want to watch you hurt. But then he's like, all right, no, I'm going to try and save this guy. In the process, accidentally blows off the head of another dude. The only guy who he had successfully saved yes, up to that point. Exactly. Good, good job, good the job judge. Jeff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I do like that we also get to see this scene with uh with that guy who who dies this way, like three movies later, because we just gotta see Hoffman setting it up when they're doing yeah. their fucking zoom out flashbacks. Fucking saw this yeah. franchise. Yeah. I think now would be a good time to kind of segue into comparing saw traps to real life torture devices. Like just going through some of his traps that basically have real life counterparts. So there was the rack, but the rack twisted the guy's head around. Right. The end, right. So yes, that was, that it was twisted a the guy's head. Yeah. That's a gnarly kill. I just use that's, that. It is. It's that's disgusting. Probably golden it's chainsaw one of the. Yeah. For that movie. It's, it's really difficult to watch. Amazing makeup prosthetic work it's so cool all of them do until they start getting the until cgi blood CGI. when does that start like five four, four? we know it's sitting four. Oh, i thought it was five Mm-mm. i can't believe saw ended up doing cgi blood. i know fuckers yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm just using that as a kicking off point because they have the exact same name mm-hmm. so why not we'll go through some real ones and then we'll talk about ones in the movies that are similar so um the death mask in saw 2 aka the venus flytrap which this is its second appearance on this podcast (laughs) um so the venus flytrap is is like you know it's like thing around this dude's head it's two halves of a whole thing and so this mask has like spikes on the inside so when the timer goes up it clamps shut and just drives nails through this dude's head and the key to get it's behind his eye and he doesn't get it he doesn't get it nope um this, I think, is pretty analogous to the... Uh, Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden! Yeah! yeah! Eddie the Head. The Iron Ma- Yeah, that's right. That's his name, isn't it? Yeah. The Iron Maiden was a cabinet with spikes or nails on the inside that's big enough to fit a person. And basically, you kind of get what... You know, you shut it. Yeah, nails all up in a It's person. like a chokey with less room. It is basically like this. Yeah, the chokey's <laughs> got a little wiggle room in it. Historians speculate if the Iron Maiden was ever actually used to torture people. Really? There's a theory that a German philosopher made up the device and made up the history of it back in like the 1700s. Wow. Um, and that any versions of it that currently exist and that are displayed as real were actually created to be a kind of sensational exhibit meant to freak people out. Hmm. So it's kind of, you know, that's what museums and exhibitions were until very recently yeah definitely the last century is when we started realizing no museums need to be factually accurate you know yeah that's why if if you're in la 
highly, highly, highly recommend the Museum of Jurassic Technology because it's a museum. So it's out in Culver City and it's it's a museum that mimics what museums used to be. So some of the stuff in there is real. A lot of it's fake. And so you kind of go in there. You don't know. There's no guide or there's nothing telling you what's real and what's not because that's what museums were they were all full of bullshit people who have seen american horror story freak show i think they have one of those museums in there right because uh aren't they like capturing uh quote-unquote freaks from from the yes the circus or show or whatever and like giving them to this this collector at this Mm -hmm. museum yeah but i'm even talking if a museum i don't know kind of post-mortem surgeried some dead animals together and was like, look, it's a five-headed thing. A uh, house of a thousand corpses type thing. Yes. Yeah. The angel trap in Saw 3. Do you remember this one? Ooh, uh, I think so. You can tell me. Is it something to do with the shoulder blades? No. So oh. this is Detective Carrie. Oh. R.I.P. Oh, the ribs. She has her ribs ripped oh, open Carrie from got done the dirty. front. Yeah, she's in a machine that's rigged to fail. She's that chick from uh she's that chick from Starship Troopers. <gasps> Whoa! Who, yeah. Who's obsessed she really? with the lead guy. She's the girl I want to cosplay. Yeah, she's like the badass oh, who's obsessed guys. with the lead guy who he doesn't give the time of day because fucking Denise Richards is there. Oh yeah. But she's I love awesome. Starship Troopers. Yeah. That movie's great. I hadn't even seen it until People recently. People requested it. And I count. loved it. It yeah. holds up. It's such a funny satire. I love it. But you got to you gotta know it's a satire. It's one of those it's movies. it's easy to figure out. You would think so, but some people take it at face value. It's ridiculous. It's like American History X. Some people you just don't want to watch that movie with because they don't they, quite they just get it. They take it literally. Yeah, and they kind of root for the wrong thing yeah, in it or like always sunny <laughs> yeah. Totally, yeah if you're watching it's always sunny and cheering these horrible people <laughs> yeah although golden god i will forever worship at that altar yes so detective carrie has her ribs ripped open from the front by a machine where it's got like i don't know basically imagine like a steel rib cage around her actual rib cage where like the points of the rib cage are like in and under her ribs in the front and it rips open her yeah. ribs. That one's brutal. She can't get it. Yeah, that one's rigged to fail because it was built by Amanda. Amanda. Or no, was it built by Hoffman? No, was, I think it, I'm pretty sure it was Amanda. They might change. Oof. They maybe they might have it later. It, yeah, but I think at first we're supposed to believe that it was made by Amanda, which sucks because Carrie Let's fucking see. did what she needed to do, and it didn't work. Yeah, she died. I want to see if you can guess what real life thing that this made me think of. Um, I don't know real life torture things. Okay. <laughs> what is it? The blood eagle. You what know the blood eagle? No. Oh, baby, I'm about to fuck you up what? so bad. No. The blood eagle is a alleged. So again, who knows? Mm-hmm. It's a Viking torture. Mm. It involves the victim's ribs being opened up from the back, and then their lungs flipped out across the ribs that are open so what that the their lungs and their ribs look like they're an eagle. Was this in Hannibal? I Yes, it was. Yeah. It was. It, it's in season one, I believe, Hannibal. I also think in the show Vikings, there's there's a blood eagle that okay. they do. So it it's in the zeitgeist, <laughs> I guess. It's a, it's a pretty gnarly torture. The freezer room in Saw 3. Mm-hmm. Where fucking the... Jeff again. Fucking it's Jeff. Jeff. Jeff is all over this episode. You know what? Guess what? Jeff fucks up again. This one. Yeah, because <laughs> he fucks up everything. So what is it? What does Jeff have to do? So in this he one? walks in and there's this lady naked in a freezer, and then she's getting blasted with water. So she's like freezing and turning into a little nudesicle. Yeah. As Jeff's job is to just oh he has to like reach behind some uh cold pipes where jeff to get a fucking key to unlock her this is the only bit of discomfort that jeff experiences during his movie is when he gets a little bit of freezer burn on his cheek dude jeff has it so easy jeff compared to so the easy. other people who have to do like trials like rig or the insurance guy yeah where they actually get super fucked up during those but then there's jeff who just like fails his way through this thing this, I think, is really analogous to something called the gibbet. The gibbet, and this is a confusing word because sometimes 
gibbet can also mean gallows, like the structure that something hangs from. But I often saw it referring to a cage, which is a person-sized cage. Think like a bird cage that a person can stand in or sit in. And all it is is you're, it's a cage where you put someone in it and you leave them out to die by exposure. Wow. Yeah. So depending on where you put them, you know, if, if they're in like a town square or somewhere where people can get them, you know, people can throw things at them, hurt them, or they can die. They can be sunburnt to death or frozen to death. So it's basically just the elements get to them. I didn't technically kill you. I, didn't I just nature put you in did. a cage. There's a possibility that Henry VIII was responsible for this specific form of torture because apparently before then only dead people were placed in gibbets as like a warning so mm-hmm. that they'd be executed and then you'd put them in a, a gibbet and hang them up and apparently there were so many gibbets everywhere in Europe and this is a, a quote living or dead victims of the gibbet became so numerous that they littered Europe's landscape like signposts often being used as directional guideposts for travelers over the stone bridge past the gibbet and onto the village over the river and past the gibbet to grandmother's house we go. <laughs> Just rotting corpse. Something else I found interesting was I I believe, um, and I could be wrong, I think I remember reading that only men were ever placed in gibbets because it was considered, you know, so eventually your clothes would deteriorate and eventually there's a naked corpse just hanging out in this can't gibbet and it, you corpse. can't you can't have a naked lady and it was considered more respectable to burn women <laughs> because then you wouldn't see them naked mm. <laughs> how you doing it's like it just reminds me of all the time i have to spend m- masking nipples out of my youtube videos alongside all the uncensored just gore going yeah on. it's crazy <laughs> it's it's truly crazy we still, we, it's amazing how that stuff sticks. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You can have super violence and have it still be PG-13. But you but can't have nipples. Don't you get those areolas in no. there? The oxygen crusher in Saw 6. Okay. So the oxygen crusher is a trap where you're hooked up to a mask with a hose. And there's also a gigantic press around your waist. Oh, yeah. It, it's a standoff one. Yes. Where only one person will make only it out. Only one person can live. Because the person, every time you breathe, it crushes your torso, your ribs a little bit more. So whoever can hold their breath longer. And it's it's the insurance guy. And then his... Uh, his, I don't want to say opponent, but that's kind of what it is, is like a, an older, heavier set smoker. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing with this movie is like, you, you you judge this person not willing to get insurance, so now can you outlive their will to live? Right. And he does, because, I mean, the guy's a smoker. Yep. So basically all it is is every time you take a breath in this thing, the press around you closes in more, and then you eventually get smushed to death. Every breath you take, I'll be crushing you. And this is uh, this is analogous to pressing or crushing. That's you know classic classic way to torture and kill someone. I is feel it like... just the Giles thing from uh, Crucible? More weight? Just... Oh yeah. So put a put a bunch of rocks on them. Yeah. Okay. These were the not inventive uh, tortures. Yeah. Although These were the tortures pressed for time. There were, you know, inventive ways to do them. Oh, I saw, yeah? it's amazing how I saw some pictures or pictures, like drawings of, you know, prisoners being tortured where they have like a very fancy set of weights on top of oh. them. And isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah. I made a lot better. This is the actual decree from the 1400s in Britain, I believe, about the punishment of pressing. So here we go. The prisoner shall be remanded to the place from whence he came and put in some low, dark room. There he shall lie without any litter or anything under him, and that one arm shall be drawn to one quarter of the room with a cord, and the other to another, and that his feet shall be used in the same manner, and that as many weights shall be laid on him as he can bear and more." that he shall have no sustenance but the worst bread and water, and that he shall not eat the same day on which he drinks, not drink on the same day on which he eats, and so he shall continue till he die. Oh, you know what? The weight kind of sucks, but really, this bread is awful. This bread sucks. God. (laughs) So if if that made no sense, all it is is it's just a... No, I feel like it was a very technical explanation. I got to hand it to them 
on that degree, they they laid out their instructions very uh, cleanly. Yeah. So with this torture, people usually confessed <laughs> by the time oh, you really? get to a few hundred pounds. Yeah, on top I feel of like you. with all of these tortures, you're going to be confessing but stuff the thing that is, you is didn't when even you, do. Well, the thing is, is you know, when you confess, I'm pretty sure in most cases you die, you're sentenced to death because you're like, yeah, fine, I'm a you fucking just can't witch. Win. So people usually confessed. There are rare accounts of people's ribs exploding out of their sides. Oh. One guy's account who lived after being tortured like this for a week says that he believed that his head was being crushed too, but he realized afterwards that he wasn't having his head crushed. It was just that so much blood was basically being forced up towards his head that it caused the sensation oh of being God. crushed. The impalement wheel from Saw 7. Oh... We were just talking about this one earlier. It's a lady on something that, for whatever reason, is uh, incrementally d- turning her closer to spikes. Yeah. So it's it's a woman who is standing up and she's like a spoke on this wheel. And so she's being rotated forward. And what happens is while she's being rotated forward, her head moves towards these three spikes, which then impale her eyes and then her mouth. Like it goes through her mouth and like punctures the back of her throat pretty much yeah it's gross this one reminded me of the catherine wheel um or just the breaking wheel or honestly the wheel is a form of torture that again somehow across all cultures we all just thought of this way (laughs) to fuck each other up it's amazing how many tortures just had independent yes creations in different cultures it's very very weird Mm. (laughs) so in in ancient rome some variation of of a uh, wheel torture is kind of like what we were discussing before. You take a barrel, you put some nails into the barrel, you put a guy in there, you roll down a hill, oh. and you got death by nails in a barrel. I'm Steve O, and this is the wheel. <laughs> nails in a barrel. <laughs> this sounds like Jackass. It extreme. really does. Or like that Beavis and Butthead episode oh, where yeah. he go, he like sits inside of the tire and then he pushes him down the hill. <laughs> Oh, man, we're <laughs> such 90s kids, those two point references. Yeah, jackass and Holy beavis and shit. Butt. There also was another Roman wheel torture where you're strapped to the outside of a wheel with spikes on it. So this is closer to the saw one where you're like kind of on the outside of the wheel. And you're um, there's another set of spikes mounted on the ground so that when the wheel turns forward, you get crushed between the spikes. Mm. And then there's also, yeah, the, the braking wheel or the Catherine wheel which who's Catherine Catherine was a saint that apparently I oh. I think she was condemned to die via wheel but something where it was like a you know some a miracle where the wheel breaks before they can put her on it but then she's beheaded yeah I, I was like no way did she like no, no no she was martyred as fuck <laughs> yeah yeah but that that's that's who the Catherine wheel is named after Saint okay. Catherine so if you look at pictures of her she's got a wheel next to her you know like a big wagon wheel so um generally the Victim is tied down spread eagle to a wheel and just has their limbs bludgeoned so that they're mangled. And sometimes they will get artsy and they'll take the mangled limbs and weave them throughout oh the God. spokes and then put hey, put the person up so everyone can look at it. God damn it. I'm, s- I'm just so mad at people right now. Yeah, the idea is to keep the person alive so that they die slowly and in extreme pain. Cool. I think part of part of why the wheel became so popular too is I think there was some code. I, I can't I couldn't remember if this is like an Inquisition code specifically, but there was this idea that you can't spill blood during torture. So, you know, a lot of the tortures we've talked about, there's no there's no blood being spilled. Like the rack. You're just dislocating their limbs. Yeah. And, you know, there's I can't think of any now because I'm I'm just there's so many. But yeah, so the wheel, you're not drawing blood you're just totally fucking up someone's skeleton bullshit the oven in saw two and saw six Mm. jigsaw uses an oven a couple times to kill you know it's self-explanatory person goes in oven person dies in oven (laughs) um you can't explain that can't explain that this reminded me and i found very similar to i think a lot of if, if you're if you find torture interesting, I feel like this is the one you pull out at parties for like this crazy form of torture that maybe most people don't know about and is truly nuts. Um, the brazen bull. Have you heard of this? No. This is an alleged one. I'm just thinking of those bulls that you you ride at a bar. Only this one's like super hot. 
You're you have the right idea, kind of. Oh, like a buck and bronco type thing. No, it's not like moving around. It's not. That'd be. It's just hot. That would at least be fun. Maybe I don't know. Although if you know you're getting seared to it, that kind of makes it easier to stay on. That so. I think what you're thinking about is closer to other tortures where they have they put people on like a what's basically a sawhorse. You know, like a sawhorse where it's it's like the two a frame like legs and like a a plank across. But the plank across is a sharp triangle, and you put a person on it. You put weights on their legs, oh and then God. you they basically just die from. You know, having their, their taint torn their up. Their taint gets all yeah, and usually it's torn up, and they're still alive, but then it get they get sepsis, and that's how they die. Oh. <clears throat> anyway, the brazen bull was allegedly invented in ancient Greece. So again, big alleged. This one might just come from myth legend, but it's it's one that's so crazy. I had to put it in here. It's a giant bronze bull that's hollow on the inside and has a door. Person gets inside, person gets fire lit under them. Screams can be heard through the nostrils of the statue, and so it sounds like a bull. Yeah. Yeah. The inventor presented it to the dictator of the city that they were in, which is Acragas, Sicily, as a way to execute criminals. The dictator loved it <laughs> and then made the guy who invented it demonstrate it for him. And by that, I mean he made this dude crawl inside of it and Why? they killed him that way because he's... You know, power. This, that's the thing. Every time I hear about these things being used on people, the one wish I have is for everyone who did it to someone has to endure. Well, there's always people in power doing it to other people, knowing that like they'll never have to face this or face consequences because they have the power. And I fucking hate that. Do you want to know how this dictator gets murdered? I hope he gets put in that bowl. He gets put in that bowl when he was overthrown by a mob. Good. But now I need to see the mob get put in it. What? Just by this logic. Should I just go on forever? I guess. Eye for an eye forever. Leaves the whole world blind and in bowls. Yeah. Ugh, I hate so, people. All right. So I'll wrap this up because I'm breaking, you. James. Yeah. So you may be wondering, why the fuck have we done this to each other? <laughs> What makes people do this? What makes people invent these things? Again, it's desire for order. It's fear of any deviation from what someone thinks is normal, whether it's committing a crime or speaking out of turn or following a different religion. Jigsaw is so much like these other men throughout history who have condemned others to die in torturous ways because he thinks he's the correct one, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all this is, is it's people who are in this position of authority who think that they're the right ones, you know? Jigsaw is a piece of shit. <laughs> it's in my notes. And all of these inquisitors or enforcers or rulers or whoever were shitty too, and they all have convinced themselves that they hold the key to rehabilitating humanity. Like, that's the common thread, right? They're like, oh, we're going to fix humanity, because we're the right ones yeah. and we're going to do it in a really fucked up way because that'll make people not want to do the things we don't want them to do anymore. Yeah. So I think in that way, Jigsaw's closer to resembling, you know, a really scarily accurate representation of humankind that many other horror villains don't necessarily do. Because like you mentioned earlier, Leatherface, Jason... They're outside of the law. They're not positions of authority. They're kind of rogue dudes. They're neutral evil. Yes. Jigsaw's lawful evil. Yes. Jigsaw, I have, he is institutionalized misery. And he very startlingly echoes our okayness with cruelty to other people if it's under the skies of law or some kind of justice or good. He has strict rules and a code. And so that's a kind of evil that is a lot more pervasive and ingrained than a one-off axe murderer in just humanity in general, you know? Yeah. So I hope you leave this episode with honestly some more respect for the way Jigsaw's developed as a character, even though he's garbage. <laughs> I still love him. And how Jigsaw is just kind of our worst qualities as a people just kind of flipped right back at us, you know? Yeah. He's one that I think we have to grapple more so with as like a member of a society that wants to maintain some kind of order so that we can all live in some kind of order. Yeah. Yeah. Just stuff to think about. Fun. How are you feeling? Uh, not great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how I felt when I was researching is, you know, I find this stuff really interesting, but, you know, every once in a while it would just hit me like... 
people died that way. Yeah, like these are real. These people. are real people. And like even this though is... it was like you know hundreds of years ago, There's they were still, still real. They're people. still real. They felt the same things we do. I don't. Yeah. I think maybe we have this notion that people back then were you know less prone to pain or less prone to, but no. I think what it was is that people back then, uh, a higher percentage of people felt like death maybe wasn't the end of things. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like, let God sort them out or uh, just that kind of mentality. Whereas I think, thankfully, more people nowadays are like, no, we should probably focus on not being yeah. shitty now while we're alive. Just in case. Just in case. You know? Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Mm. cool <laughs> do you want to talk about this new stuff we have on our desk oh, as something sure. like happy and good because you know what's good for society is people making art and people making stuff instead of torturing people yeah real and quick if you're just listening you can't see it yeah but, uh we'll do a good job of describing them i got this in the p.o box today and this comes from uh a fan Raphael Bennett Barrett he wrote in cursive uh I think it's Barrett then maybe but it's a customized Funko Pop figure of it's me it's so cool and like even the box is all customized and it's it's James H. Nice, uh number one dead meat Funko Pop I think this it's is awesome so cool this is really cool the box is even so close to what the yeah, Funko box is just look like, like a figure. It's so cool. So thank you, Raphael. This is very awesome. I love it. And then uh, in addition to that, I already posted pictures of this one on my Instagram. I will of the uh, Funko Pop. Actually, probably by the time this goes up, you can see pictures yeah. of the Funko Pop on my Instagram. But we got some wood carvings. Yeah, this is from Adam, right? Yeah, Adam. Uh, designed DNA is his uh, Twitter and Instagram at designed DNA. Check that out. This shit's amazing. I got the Dead Meat logo and the golden chainsaw. And they also sent a little thing for they Chelsea. They sent something for me. It's a little, it's a Freddy glove <laughs> with my name. That you on. like Freddy. Mm. Yeah. So very cool stuff. I have a P.O. box uh, that you can send stuff to. We'll put that in the description of this video. And if you feel like getting your art on and with a Dead Meat style flair, go ahead and do that. Send us stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll feature it. It's yeah. great. Thank you for that, because you replenished my soul a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You're you're like, let's, we'll talk stuff. about some like good, just objectively <sighs> good things that people have done and is like making stuff. Yeah. It's always good. Well, if you enjoyed this, uh, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Make sure to rate and review us on that app mm -hmm. or and or on iTunes. That's always fun. Give us a little five-star review there. We are on Audio Boom now. That's where all of our stuff lives officially, but we're still uploading to SoundCloud. Yeah, we'll still be on SoundCloud. And uh, stuff. We're still... You should have no disruptions. Yeah. If you do, tweet at me. I'll fix it. Yeah. Chelsea's the one doing that. Yeah. Don't tweet me. I got enough to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll take care of it. Uh, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can follow me at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C -E -E -C -C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, uh, I meet store .com. Got yeah. merch. We got a Final Girl shirt. We just got the doll machete pins in. Yes, we did. As a People as a... wanted those doll machete pins. <laughs> maybe, maybe to gift to people that they don't like. But like... like enough to give something. Yeah. It's a weird demographic of people that wanted these, but we got them for you. So yeah. They're so there. Now... Go buy them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, look for the, the word dead meat WordPress. We, I think it's deadmeat.wordpress.com or dead meat podcast. We'll link to it. You'll, yeah. We'll link to it in the description. But yeah, that's where I'll put the sources I use for this. And yeah. yeah. So cool. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, do we know what we're doing next week? No idea. Okay. We'll figure it out. We're going to figure it out. And it'll be good regardless. It might be a review. Ooh, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. If you have any ideas, just not a research one. Those take me a few weeks. I've been working on this one since we did the real life events one. Yeah. And so basically all the other episodes are like, you know, pretty easy one offs so that I can take time to research stuff like this. I read several books to do <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been Deadbeat Podcast. 